everyone. Um, I hope everyone can hear me. If anyone is having any technical difficulties, um, there is a question or text box in the side. Uh, if you could type in to that if you're having any trouble hearing the webinar and we can try to uh, help you out or make sure that you're going to be uh, able to hear us. Um, so if nobody writes in the box, then I'm going to assume that um, we're all set and then you can hear me. Um, so thank you for joining us tonight for uh, help. I'm stressed out, this stress management webinar. Um, we're going to go through the webinar um, in its entirety and then take some questions at the end. Um, so let me just make sure that this is working. It's not working. Hold on. Oh, here we go. Okay. So during the next hour, we're going to work through what stress management is, methods to manage stress, how to create your own stress management plan, and finally, stress management in your chapters. Um, before we begin, I just want to remind everyone that the information contained in this webinar is for information purposes only and should not replace the opinion of your own medical profession. Um, if you obviously have issues that need to be spoken with a medical professional, you should uh, go perhaps to the health center or at the school um, or something like that. And this is really just uh, for information purposes. A little bit about me. There I am. So I can't see you, but now you can see who I am. Uh, my name is Michelle Kane. I'm a member of the Academic Excellence Committee, uh, in which I help some chapters um, in CAPA with their academic excellence and we've placed additional focus uh, for some chapters to help them uh, bring up their GPAs. Uh, I was initiated at Beta Psi in Toronto, Canada. I've served in various CAPA roles including chapter advisor and PDC and here is my email address in case you want to follow up after the webinar with any questions that you might have. I am more than happy to speak with you after and, and uh, help you out with uh, whatever question is you have. So what is stress? If you ask someone what they think about what they think about stress, you'll often hear things like driving in heavy traffic, facing an upcoming deadline for an assignment that's coming up fast. I'm sure all of you are quite familiar with that one. Uh, arguing with a friend, dealing with unpaid bills, studying for multiple exams, feeling like you don't have time to get everything done that you want. I know that is something I personally deal with quite a bit. Uh, finding a date to formal can certainly cause people stress. And getting that EPF, EPF in on time. Uh, you, as you can see, these examples are all quite different, uh, but certainly can make you feel the same way. Uh, this is a feeling of what I typically associate as a lack of control and it can come on quickly and at times unexpectedly. Uh, the technical name for that feeling is the stress response. Uh, it can include a pounding heart, tense muscles, quick breathing, sweating, tight neck and shoulders. Um, the physical symptoms are associated with the fight or flight response which I'm sure many of you have learned about in school. And basically this is this means that your body's physically gearing up for an emergency is, is the simple way to explain that. Uh, most medical sources describe the impact of the stress response in a couple of categories. Uh, to start, certain levels and well-timed stress can be good. Um, they really they can help us rise to many challenges, such as writing a big exam jumping out of the way of a bus. So while you might not automatically think that the, that the thought of stress is good, um, it really, really, really helps in certain situations for people to rise to challenges. Um, how that works is as stress increases, performance rises to the optimal point. But if stress continues to increase, eventually performance and efficiency decline. And, and that's where we run into problems and where you end up with things like stress management. Um, once you're in the efficiency decline, it's when your body's continually experiencing stress, which can be called in the medical term maladaptive or unhealthy, and that can lead to uh, health problems. 
the decline is the bad stress, and it is bad. Um, here we have a list of some stress-linked health problems, in which I am sure some of you have experienced these, and things like uh, pretty common anxiety and depression, uh, headaches, irritable bowel syndrome. I know a lot of uh, people end up, you know, your stomach's always hurting if you're freaking out and feeling stressed. Insomnia, uh, you know, if you're always thinking about your exams or you're always worrying about things, you know, very school-related things. A lot of people have trouble sleeping. It can lead to ulcers, uh, allergic skin reactions, muscle spasms, infectious diseases. You might notice when you're having a lot of stress at school that you, you get sick more easily, you know, you get that cold or the cold will linger and not go away for the whole semester. So that really is a, it, it can be a, a factor from ha being stressed. It can really cause you uh, significant health problems. So how can you manage your stress? Obviously, it is very important and uh, the first step to managing your stress is to become aware of your stress warning signs. The stress warning signs are different for everyone, but being able to recognize them when you're feeling stressed out can quickly counteract the stress response. So we have a couple categories of symptoms and warning signs for stress. We've gone over a few of the physical ones such as the tight neck and shoulders, back pain, um, sleep difficulties, but it can also include um, dizziness or fainting, difficulty swallowing, um, restlessness, frequent urges to urinate, really a whole bunch of different things. Um, I remember when I was in undergrad, I used to uh, become very dizzy. I did have that one, and you know, it's hard at the time to think that this is what's happening, but that really can be from stress. Uh, behavioral symptoms, these are sometimes a little bit easier to identify. Um, I'm sure some of you either do it yourself or know someone who does. You see them doing it. Um, grinding of the teeth, an inability to complete tasks, being overly critical or bossy, um, overuse of alcohol, emotional eating, fist clenching, crying, irritability, for those of you who live um, or who are a part of house chapters, uh, I'm sure you've seen this also uh, in your fellow sisters in the house, especially around exam time, um, people feeling anxious with a quick temper, um, and, and some more serious ones with when you come into depression, and you know some people end up very lonely or bored. So uh, those symptoms can be identified by a third party. And finally, we've got cognitive symptoms. Um, which really you'd have to notice yourself, which are like continual worry, poor concentration, loss of sense of humor, lack of creativity, trouble thinking clearly. And so really that's a, that's a very long list of different types of symptoms. Um, we are, they, don't worry about writing any of that down. I hope you weren't racing with your pens. There is a slide at the end of this deck um, that, is, that has all of them listed, um, all the symptoms listed out. Uh, that you can use afterwards. So once you have um, identified what those feelings are for you, the second step is to identify events in which you experience the stress response. Um, we listed several events earlier, like driving in heavy traffic or studying for multiple exams, uh, but stress-causing events can also include being frequently late, um, lack of confidence in your ability to complete a task, the change in the health of a friend or family member, a shift in work, change in finances, of course, final exams, job interviews might be a big stress event. Uh, that's pretty, well, I mean, I think that one's pretty easy to recognize for many people, but again, it's it certainly could be a cause of stress. Um, so now that we have identified some physical symptoms as well as causes, um, and you, ha yeah, so you have an idea of the events that typically cause stress, you can try out different stress management techniques to see what works for you. Uh, it's ideal to use a combination of approaches, and now we're going to review uh, a couple categories of techniques. Uh, the first one is called the relaxation response. 
Uh, this is opposite of the stress response, and you can learn to do it at will to create a state of relaxation. So different techniques include, we've got one of them is called the breath focus, and it really is what it sounds like. You focus on slow and deep diaphragmatic breathing. It is, it's, it's good for you to be able to disengage your mind and from distracting thoughts and sensations, and it's the type of breathing when you breathe that your stomach comes out, not in, like a lot of people do, and it's really big, full, long, deep breaths, and you can do this for a couple minutes just to take a moment to yourself to calm down if you are having a, a stress response, um, and, and it can be very helpful most of the time in sort of a on-the-spot moment, you know, because something's happening that you need to relax from. Another technique that you can use is guided imagery. And this is a technique that is most effective if you start to practice it regularly. And you use pleasing mental images to help you relax and focus. So I know, you know, when, when I was writing this, we were joking around, but like, oh, picturing the beach, picturing going for a run, you know, something that's going to relax you puppies. Um, but just, you, you know, you pick some images or you look at some images and you, this is something to be practiced again and again. And you'll find or so the experts say is in time it will just it'll be very automatic and you'll be able to relax yourself quite quickly. Um, another technique is mindfulness meditation which is breathing deeply while staying in the moment by deliberately focusing on thoughts and sensations that arise during the meditation session. So this is really a more pure meditation and it is something daily um, that you would practice potentially at the same time every day um, if possible, and it really becomes a very routine, um, routine way of relaxing yourself. Finally, one of the relaxation responses is repetitive prayer, and that can be using a short prayer or phrase um, to help enhance focusing on your breath. So again, um, this can either be a religious prayer, uh, it could be a um, sort of any kind of prayer you want, or repetitive sentence that makes you feel better it would be that repetition to get you your mind off of what's stressing you out to begin with. Um, and then, and that's basically how you do that one. It's pretty simple. Another technique that I personally like, uh, it's not working, oh, is the cognitive, it's called cognitive restructuring. And this is uh, very helpful to calm automatic thinking that can engage the stress response. And of, of all the stresses, I'd say, for me personally, this is this is the things that I do, um, and so as I was researching for this webinar, I found this cognitive restructuring really to be, I think, quite helpful. And in essentially, in its nature, it's like if you go to talk to a friend, and you're freaking out, it's it's how a friend likely would calm you down, and this is so you learn how to calm yourself down um, when others aren't around. So some of the distortions can be things like all or nothing, and that's that's. A thought perhaps if you don't perform flawlessly you consider yourself a complete failure it's very well like it sounds all or nothing another one over generalization um, like one negative event and you perceive it to be part of an endless pattern of, of bad circumstances or defeat like you can't trust anyone and, and just you really go overboard with it um, disqualifying the positive it's you're unwilling or unable to accept a compliment or praise and you deflect compliments with self-deprecation by saying it's no big deal, it was nothing, um, it could make you uncomfortable. So it's really, once you recognize these distortions, you have to make a note that you're doing it. Um, jumping to conclusions, emotional reasoning, uh, very big that I, I hear a lot of uh, women that I work with saying is, you know, sentences like I should, I ought to, I never, and again those are very all or nothing generalizing comments. A way, the, the method to get past this is a four-step four step process um, that's helpful to find relaxation when you find that you're doing this. One is to stop, call a mental timeout, and, and that's just really like you notice that you're doing it and you, you take a step outside, remove yourself from the situation. The next step is to breathe. Um, because likely you might not notice, but when you're doing this, you might have become more tense, your heart might be racing a bit. So you really just give yourself a moment. And then you really have to reflect about what you're doing and, and think to yourself, 
is what you're saying true? Are you jumping to conclusions, going overboard, that kind of thing? And and then you have to choose how to dis how to deal with the situation and the source of the stress. So, you know, if you have a bad test mark and you automatically oh I'm a failure, if you stop and reflect. How are you going to deal with thinking you're a failure? Is that to plan a better study schedule? Is it to go talk to the TA? Is it, you know, to, to buddy up when you're studying next time? It might be more helpful. So that's sort of one example of that process. Um, but of course, you know, this can work in any situation. And um, I, per I really personally find it very helpful to, to put things in perspective sometimes when you're in that stress moment. Um, a third thing to, to remember in your in, in being able to manage stress is to maintain a healthy lifestyle. This includes getting regular exercise. Uh, exercise can be a relaxation response in itself and some specific exercises are very effective uh, for relaxation. Obvious ones like yoga and tai chi but um, even something as simple as walking uh, can be very relaxing and that's often why you'll hear a lot of people say you know if you're stressed out or you're studying, you know, walk it off, go take a walk. So even even if you're not able to go to a gym or have any kind of formal exercise, getting in some extra walking time can be very helpful. Of course, in maintaining a healthy lifestyle, eating healthy foods for proper nutrition is important. Um, I know on the college campuses that can be hard sometimes and um, there's a lot of unhealthy foods around. So really simple and small changes such as increasing um, your fruits and vegetables for the day or you know eating more whole grains instead of uh, just white grains little things like that as you you know one thing one thing it'll add up and, and you'll find you're, you are eating a lot healthier and also a big a big pointer is take the time to eat like sit down and enjoy your meal don't eat over the sink don't eat if you if you can avoid it while you're walking or you know kind of driving through or, or running I know everyone's very busy, but taking the time to, to eat and, and give yourself a minute is a really big, makes a big difference in your day. Um, another way, and this one I think is very capo friendly, uh, is reaching out to friends. So confidants, acquaintances, your fellow sisters, and uh, picking a date to go out, making some plans. You can also volunteer your time. You can email friends back home or those abroad, you know, potentially people who might not be involved in your stressful situation and just, you know, talk out your problems or even just, it's great, go to a movie, uh, go for those walks that I'm such a fan of, do things like that. Um, reaching out to friends can really uh, calm you down and get you out of your stressful state of mind. And finally, for techniques for relaxation, uh, try writing in a journal. Uh, you can use a journal in two ways that can be helpful to relax. One way would be writing about the troubling or stressful event uh, as a way to work through the issue. You can write about it just to get it off your mind. You can write about it so that you check back on what you wrote, see how you're, uh, how you're progressing. Um, and the other piece is to write about positive events. Some people call this a gratitude journal and it can be very helpful to put focus on events that are great in your life. So re refocusing on, you know, today was a good deed, today you did something um, nice for someone else. Uh, I know, again, even in your chapter, we, we do uh, at meetings, I know a lot of chapters do supportive sister or, you know, you give kudos to someone who's doing re really well and it's a really good feeling. So it is great to, to point those positive things that you're doing out to yourself. Uh, sounds very simple, but a lot of people don't take the time uh, to do that for themselves. So now that we've reviewed how to uh, identify stress and the warning signs, the stress-causing events, and various techniques to manage the stress, which in a nutshell are all quite, quite simple, uh, we can put together your stress management plan. So step one. Identify and make a list of your physical stress reactions. Uh, as I mentioned, at the end of this webinar, there is um, a list to help you get started. And it is really, a lot of this is going to be a self-reflection type of a thing to get your plan together. So you make a list of your physical stress reactions. The second thing that you're going to do 
is you're going to identify events that com commonly cause you stress. Of course, you're not going to be able to list every single thing that could ever cause you stress, but um, if you're someone who commutes, you, you maybe automatically know driving in the car can stress you out. Um, if you're someone who gets nervous for a test, that could be your stress situation. Everyone has events that they know cause them stress. Um, so really, that's a good place to start is putting those together in a list. Uh, next, the best thing that's going to work for most people is you have to try a variety of the stress management techniques that we talked about. Um, typically, one is not, is not going to be enough to, to really help you manage stress effectively. So what um, some, uh, I was reading some material from Harvard, what they had suggested was, from the medical school there, is creating a schedule of the days and times that you're going to work on stress management. So really, it's, it's an exercise. You, you have to put the time in to get the benefit out. Um, they suggested creating, you know, if this, this is the first week of my stress management uh, schedule, first week we're going to try breathing, the breathing exercises, and uh, journaling. Another week we're going to do, you know, when you start tracking, we're going to also have that worksheet um, available online once this webinar is posted, and that's something you can go back to your chapters with if you're going to work through this with them. Um, you can, you'll be able to, to put together this as a plan. And with that worksheet, what it helps you do is keep notes of the progress, so you'll be able to see the things you tried You'll make notes if you liked it or not, um, and, and you'll really start to see what works for you. And as I mentioned, so stress management in your chapters, I jumped ahead of myself. Uh, really, I mean, ha when, you, when you go to have presentations with your chapters, um, for instance, if you're the academic excellence, um, VP of academic excellence, uh, you can have presentations to the chapter, and one of the best things to do is talk about stress management, anything about it. A lot of people don't talk about this topic. Everybody's stressed out, and I think the common thought is, oh, I'll deal with it. It'll be fine. It's not a big deal, but it really can affect, as we just discovered and talked about, it can affect your health. It can affect your ability to perform and tests in your job, volunteering. So it is really important to, to bring it up and, and put light on it in the chapter. Uh, some things that I suggest to some of the chapters I work with is to schedule uh, a stress management presentation for the chapter. This can be either you can take this presentation and, and present it. You can have a guest speaker from your campus health center. I know most schools have that available. Uh, that they, they have some people that will go and educate around campus. Another thing you can do uh, is work with either the event chair, uh, VPS, or other appropriate officers to create events to help relieve stress. So if you are the VPAE, um, I know a lot of the time your, your activities that you do typically revolve around collecting the grades, you know, checking on people's academics, but you can very much be involved in creating um, events in this type of nature, you know, a yoga session, my favorite walking club, movie night. Um, I know one chapter, you know, they, they worked with their alumni association and they had a sort of surprise pizza salad dinner uh, on one of the study nights that they had scheduled as a treat for all the sisters. Uh, things like that, I think, make a, a big difference uh, in, in the course of the week. Next thing to do would be identify the resources that you have specific to your campus. All campuses have different things available. I was going through um, a bunch of the, the web pages of the schools that I work with, and some have very extensive health center services uh, who offer assistance in this area, where others have um, sort of a student center that deals with some of this stuff. But in any case, whatever you discover is the list of resources on your campus. Post it in your chapter house, meeting space. If you're unhoused, um, share it in the online portal. I know many of you have that you communicate uh, with. And uh, if you're lucky, if perhaps your, your campus has workshops, I know a few of the ones I looked up did, and those can also be very helpful. Finally, uh, in terms of Kappa, what do we have for you? Well, you have each other to talk to. Uh, the chapter definitely has the VPS and her committee to speak about uh, stress management. 
Uh, you have the, yourselves, the VPAE, and your committee to work with women in the chapter to help them through this. You also have your advisors. Uh, the advisors are certainly interested in in more than just if you got your form done on time or you you know you submitted that EPF that we talked about. Uh, they really they really are there for you. And if if any women are having issues dealing with school or or stress, I am more than willing to bet that they, they would definitely be there to help talk through it and um, give some advice. And finally, uh, the Alumni Association. Many of your alumni associations are just itching to find ways to communicate with the chapter and get involved. And, and really, some of them are very interested in acting as mentors to women in the chapter, doing activities with women in the chapter. So this could be uh, a source of advice and support, as well as additional people that you can plan some events with that kind of will allow women in the chapter to distract themselves from any, you know, stress and help them deal with the stress that they're having from school. So that brings us to questions. Um, I think that we will have, I can't personally see the questions if they're being written in, so I have a producer to this webinar, uh, Nicole Gall, who is the RDC for Region 5, who is, I think, going to come online now. Yes, at this time we do not have any questions. No questions. That's okay. Um, Nicole, do you have any questions? I don't have any questions. <laughs> um, so I hope that in that case, if, if anyone has any questions uh, after the fact or um, would like any additional information to share with their chapters. This, the webinar is going to be posted um, online in the archive uh, under the, the VPAE section. And um, there's going to be, like I said, a worksheet there to help uh, create your stress management plan that you can share with the chapter, as well as a list of the uh, different symptoms for stress response. And, uh, and you can access it there. And you can email me. Uh, as you're preparing a presentation or thinking about this with the chapter, to, we can talk about it and uh, determine the best way to present to your chapter. Um, so if that, if that's it, then um, I just want to thank everybody for attending. And I hope that you uh, got something out of this. And I hope that everyone has a great week.